what have you listened to or read lately that has inspired you that you can share with the folks? It's neither a listen to or read. Yesterday I actually watched Sankofa for the first time. And um, that was really interesting um, in understanding kind of like, yeah, it's like this slave narrative depiction thing for sure, which can be problematic at times and whatnot. It depends on what the audience and the sole gaze of it. But uh, a lot of the conversation yesterday came around this like idea around nature and time and how like where they were it was shot in Jamaica where they were and how time was passing and all the symbolisms and you know the, like the birds um, and I appreciated that in comparison to maybe some things that were made in the last few years they were like slave narrative stuff that were just kind of like just things for you to gaze at and I was like I don't know why we made this mm -hmm. I appreciate it for at least like a, a, its attempt and it's um, the approach um, and that gave me language as a creative of like things to think about as well um, and not fully get you know traumatized by like what, what was on screen yeah. like that was a little bit of it but it, was, it wasn't fully that um, so that was something that's that's fresh yeah. let's see mine mine is pretty fresh too I'm a huge yay fan and till I die <laughs> um, and I always feel like when you say that, I gotta like add something to it. Like what? Add? I, I like already Qualifier. hear the narrative. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. I already hear the narrative. But anyways, I'm a huge Yay fan. Watching Genius on Netflix, and he had just signed with Rockefeller, and he like went to his mom's house, and his mom. He was like telling his mom what he had been up to for the past two, three weeks, and um, his mom was just saying like, um, don't basically like don't lose yourself like on your way up, and she said a giant looks in the mirror and sees nothing. And I was like, that's like, you can have your feet on the ground and the head in the clouds at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it has like re been a repeat in my head. Yeah. Love you, Donda. <laughs> Genius is a really good documentary. Just is in it really my good? opinion, I like it. it. Watch to, it. To understand his origin it. and to kind of just understand no. who he is as a person. Yes. I think it's important that people watch it. I haven't watched part two yet. I've only watched part one. Um, but I that was actually probably my answer, too, because, like, I think I'm inspired a lot. I'm inspired by a lot. But I think watching the documentary, though, I love, like, his clarification. Like, he knew exactly what he was trying to do. Mm -hmm. He knew exactly what he was here to do. So and that clear. sense of knowing that I think kids have and old people get, but in the middle, the world teaches you to lose that. And so we did, did that pocket of doubt that hits in your 20s, like, skip all, all that, like, if you can. And I think Kanye just always knew who he was. I think, and for me, he inspires me because that college dropout album, I used to play that repeatedly, pulling all-nighters in architecture studio and undergrad. Like, that album got me through college. You talk about Drake's album got you through, like, that album got me through college, particularly the last song when he details his story. And... um I think for me now, though, it makes me think about my definition of success and, and the way that I redefine my definition of success because I'm going to continue watching the documentary, but we also get to see him in real life. And, um, you know, I think he's just a, an enigma, and we could study him and we could study his decisions and we could study his impact. We could dissect that and, you know, we could call out what's hubris or not. You know, and I think he's just he's a really interesting figure to even study leadership from. You know, I would love to see a Harvard case study on a guy because I think he's he's got a lot of dimension to him. Um, but it's some fallacy, too. And I think for me, it's always a question of who do I want to be and what does success look like for me? And um, his documentary right now is like raising those questions for me. So I would say that's my most recent point of inspiration. I love that. I've been reading The Purple Cow. I don't know if you guys have read that's it already. Seth Godin. Seth, Seth Godin. And man because you have ideas in your head you know and you don't always know how to articulate what's the proper way of saying it and it's mm -hmm. helping me really reformat how things are clear and concise mm -hmm. when I'm talking about my work um also like breaking the mold of being remarkable like it's okay to be remarkable and I think a lot of people are scared to be great can we talk about that can we talk about like how I feel like sometimes people are scared to be great because they don't know what's going to happen if they just let all of that genius go and so I feel like the book, even though it's talking about marketing, it's talking about like being remarkable no matter what. Have a remarkable product, a remarkable service. So no matter what, they don't have to like it, but they're going to respect it because it's that good. It's that innovative. So I want to talk a little bit about like what stops you like 
what stops people from being great or what inspires you to continue to be remarkable? I think it's a it's a choice. And just even talking about, you know, Kanye and in, in, in the way that he knew, you know, I don't know how old he was in, in episode one. Obviously in his Early 20s, 20s, but like he, he had a conviction about him. And I think mm-hmm. that is what I think establishes freedom, right? Because it's, then it's like, okay, I, I am choosing this for myself. Because when you choose to be remarkable, you're kind of choosing isolation. Like you're also, you're, you're pushing yourself outside of the pack because most people aren't remarkable. Most people are mediocre. You know, you read financial advice. It's for the average American. The average American may not be doing X, Y, and Z that you're doing or trying to pursue. And so I think about um, the way that it really feels to be remarkable. And it's kind of like you have to, I find it to be very healthy to just choose to say, okay, I'm going to live in my zone of greatness and I'm going to surround myself with people that, that respect it and encourage it and can meet me there even or push me could still and not look back and not look at who's behind me and what they might say, I think. And I think it's it's something that oftentimes has nothing to do with you being remarkable as much as it how the ripple effect of how it makes other people feel about what they're doing. And it, I think it's an underbelly of success that we don't talk about enough because it's, it can be very isolating to choose to be great. You leave people behind. You know, and not everybody's going where you're going. And I don't, everybody knows how to support that growth either. Um, so it's something that I'm I'm experiencing and exploring. And I hope to, you know, potentially, like, I don't know, craft something about it to help other people. Because it's, it's we don't always see that part of it. Yeah. But it's a real, it's a real, it's a real um, symptom, I think, of success. Agreed. Agreed. Brittany. Ask it one more time. I have what I want to say, but ask what. I, the simple, the simple question is, um. What does it mean to be remarkable? Like, how do we keep going? So hearing Dante speak, I was in my own head thinking, like, remark- being remarkable is nothing if you don't have humility. And I think, um, like, the beauty's in the cracks. And if you're not able to see the cracks for what they are right now, you'll never understand what it means to be great or why greatness is something that's remarkable, right? And um, yeah, I actually don't even know where I'm going with this answer, but humility. It was I don't going. Have, no, I was I, it's like starting. It was in my head, and now that it's out, I need to read The Purple Cow. <laughs> <laughs> the Purple Cow, people. It's a long story short, right? Like, shit, um, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of the same boat as you. I mean, I think remarkable is about a little bit about resonance of how you show up. Um, so not even just like accolades or things like that, but like truly to that conviction, that resonance you have and understanding that it's not, what are your, your success, success metrics? Is it like, oh, that everyone knows you or yeah. this and that? I think for me, it's about like, do I get to show up as myself? And I think that's always a constant struggle. We talk about like how, you know, by the time you're in your 20s, the world tells you to beat this and you have to like unlearn that. And that's what kind of then allows you to resonate at your biggest, your, at your loudest, most potent frequency for the world and where you become an aura or something that people really want to gravitate towards. Um, and that could be hard because like you move in a different way than everyone else, right? So that's fair. But that's what I think about what it means in terms of being remarkable. And I think when you add that known understanding into a thing, whether it's art or coffee shop or whatever, then that thing gets propelled because you've worked through it. You've you've gone through it. You've evaluated of like, why am I doing this? And you're constantly running through it, not as a doubt, but you're always looking at your North Star and being like, all right, are we clear on this? And there's going to be moments where you're not sure. Everyone has that. Even I'm sure Kanye has that. But there there is something innate that just feels right and that frequency. And you attract that frequency and you start to attract the people too um, that help support that vision. So... That's what I think, and I think it's just like, yeah, that. Yeah, I think it's also grounding and resiliency, right? So like yeah. being grounded in like, I know who I am, even if I lose the way, giving yourself enough grace to say I can lose the way. Yeah. Um, and speaking of grounding, what keeps you guys grounded? I think about Origin as like a place of home. We've talked about that a lot today. Um, what keeps you guys grounded as you build this this cultural reset for Austin? And yeah, I'm gonna call it that, yeah. <laughs> I think what keeps me grounded almost literally um, is being able to come home, whether I'm traveling or moving around or whatever. One, knowing that I've chosen these people as my business partners, knowing that I've chosen my community 
and how I spend time with people, how I build practice around rest, because I think I'm always moving around a lot and doing things. <laughs> and so I think um, what keeps me grounded is thinking about like the future in a, in a way that's healthy um, and also life-giving at the same time. Um, and then being able to also just check in myself. I think the joy of being an artist is being able to like be in the studio and you're actively having a therapy session mm -hmm. with yourself um, and working through things um, and then having something to embody it in, which most people don't necessarily have that, that like tactile thing to kind of channel energy into. And so I think I'm thankful to have that on a, almost on a daily in part of like what I actually call work, like this office, this set, everything to like be in the studio and um, and just being able to paint and run these little experiments and say mix these two colors and not feel so precious about that to be like, this is just an experiment in me and I'm fine letting it be, to be like, even allow myself to be vulnerable within myself in my own space. If I can't do that, then how can I do that out in the world, you know? That's beautiful. Yeah, that was. I would say mine, similar to Moya's, would be reminding myself that what I'm doing with Origin is not a um, a dire situation. Like, it's excellent that we're bringing Origin to Austin. It's awesome. There's great potential. It's needed by some, yes, but it's not like the world will go on with or without Origin. And in that space for me, there's a lot of play because I, I don't take it as heavy. Mm -hmm. And um, just seeing it as an invitation to like share my gifts with other people and to create something with other people keeps me really grounded because I don't have the heaviness of like, you need to do that. It, it's because when it turns into that, it's an obligation and you feel like it's an obligation and you also feel like you're owed something, right? Mm -hmm. Like I have, it will be successful. I have to do this. It did, it, it, it's like, not that rigid for me, which I think I've, I've been able to like stay in that space by staying really, just reminding myself it's an invitation, like I'm creating something with other people for other people. Mm -hmm. And that, I love that. Staying in that mindset really helps me. That is beautiful, they're poets, man. <laughs> they are. <laughs> I think too, like on that, that note, it's like, it's about the giving part. And yeah. I, that the giving keeps me grounded. I think about you know, a lot of the legends that have passed away, Virgil Abloh is somebody that, for me, was a beacon of freedom because he was an architect that didn't practice. And so when I was navigating my career of choosing to not practice or to no longer practice architecture and then just go off and do all these creative things, I didn't have a Virgil Abloh at that time, and I wish I did. You know, so seeing him come along was, like, so impactful for me. And then he passed away, right, at 41, 42. But he left so much. And it's the so much part, the impact of what he did. Like, you knew he was here. Like, he's left so much. And I want to, I aim for that. I aim for, like, what's the maximum that I can give? And, like, because I won't always be here, but hopefully I've, like, left something better. There's a positive ripple effect because Dante stood here. And I think, and it's not about ego as much as it's, like, I have gifts. We all do, right? We're gifted people. And it's, like, to take action on your gift. And I think that's the thing, too. Like, with starting and taking action, and then realizing that somebody is blessed by it mm -hmm. and come through with that, right? Like you take action and people show up and you're like, oh. And it does for me drive a sense of urgency because I know how important the work is, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, how many people, if we don't open this thing, are going to be different, are going to take a different path because they couldn't find community? Because I know what it's looked like thus far, right? And the relationships that have been formed. So I think about impact. Impact is my word. And I... I I'm, I say that humbly and I say that with grace of knowing that I'm just one human, but I want to maximize my gifts. And that way, when my day comes, like, I can have some of the impact Virgil had. You know what I mean? Like, that's that to me is living. And I don't know if he knew. I don't know if Kobe knew. I don't know if they knew. They only have four decades. They they lived like it, though. You read the books now. They wrote books. Like, whatever. That, they loved, they lived like it. And I think I'm, I'm, I'm interested in, in living similarly, like, just maxing out on the gifts that I have because we're so rich in gifts and fear will keep you boxed in and sitting on the sidelines and never playing a game. And I'm, I'm unwilling to live that way. I love that. <laughs> that's amazing. I feel like that's the, <laughs> that's the cut. Thank you for sitting back and chilling with us as we, um, unpacked origin stories. It's your girl, Grenelise. <laughs> we be out. <laughs>
Peace.